once again for yeah. another hot lap now. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be the case unless uh, we get corrected on that one. But uh, yeah, that's going to be a tough one if, they, if they're going to have to redo qualifying. I'm sure Team Sims uh, wouldn't be happy about that, but uh, it, uh, we, we'll just have to see what the situation is. You've seen Team Gunther out there as well. Uh, Martin Kronke behind the wheel of that one, of course. Uh, he has had an absolutely stellar career. Uh, in sim racing on the Racing World Championship side of things. And, uh, uh, well, the past season hasn't exactly gone his way, but he's still one of those drivers that you simply do not count out in any situation. Oh, no, he's an absolute... The man's a machine. It's impressive, and it's... Uh, but the thing is, other people have come into the, into the fold now. You yeah. know, we always used to just say it was the... Uh, you know, how long before Martin Kronko wins another World Championship? Well, now... All of a sudden, it's who's going to win a world championship yeah, because exactly. the uh, the level of competition has risen. But we're staying on board here just for the moment. You'll see the entry into the uh, the bus stop chicane here is crucial on the outlap because it's not so much the entry into the bus stop, it's the exit that matters here. And uh, away they go then, taking the high line because you can actually build an extra one or two miles per hour just by taking that higher line because you've got further to travel and it gives your car a lot more opportunity to uh, get into the top speed. Yeah, using that uh, banking coming through what is NASCAR turn three and four, but of course the final couple of corners uh, of this particular layout. G across the tri-oval, he goes, Martin Kronke, starting a lap here down in towards turn number one then. Of course, we've uh, sort of uh, beaten the horse there uh, in terms of how difficult, uh, describing how difficult that corner is. But uh, for Martin Kronke, it's going to be absolutely no problem at all. He's going to search for the braking zone in towards the international horseshoe here on this particular lap. And it looks pretty clean so far uh, from Martin Kronke. Yeah, out of the uh, international horseshoe then and through this fast left-hand kink. Absolutely flat out in towards the hairpin then, taking it the middle of the road line through the right-hander and then exit that out towards, get it over to the right-hand side of the road, onto the brakes and I set, as I say, hook it into that curb right there on the uh, entry curb then, get it out the corner. In fact, we're going to switch our attention then to Team Tomczyk then, Mitchell de Jong from, uh, from California. Of course, uh, driver for the Veras Quanda Sim Sport team uh, online and uh, through that uh, left hander onto the banking he goes. So we're going to be seeing those uh, lap times coming in very shortly here as uh, they're coming towards the end of their laps here, Connery. Yep, looks like that's going to be the case. So uh, Team Tomzik, uh, Mitchell De Jong, of course, probably has uh, had to travel one of the furthest distances to be here. Uh, in, in terms of actually getting himself in, in, into a race here, but uh, uh, Tom, uh, Team Tomczyk now, as part of Team Tomczyk, of course, as he gets himself into that bus stop uh, chicane, and there we go, you see the first lap time being set in by Team Krohn, so the number 24 saying a lap time first, so a 142.343 is the baseline for the drivers to beat. Team Gunther across the line, 62 thousandths of a second slower. Marginally, be, marginally slower, it's going to be not enough to get himself. Oh, look at that, though. Team Glock, one thousandth of a second behind here. Uh, Team Gunther, Team Tomzik across the line. What are they able to do? They go provisional pole position. So they dethroned Team Sims. It was a good lap from Sims, but that was a monster from Tomzik. Absolutely fantastic there. Mitchell de Jong on a mission then. Team Sykes then. It is Rudy Van Buren. And I don't know whether he's going to have enough time to get his lap time in here, but it's certainly we're going to be pushing all the way to the end of this qualifying through the left onto the uh, banking once again and uh, through NASCAR's turn one and two and at uh, Team Sykes and uh, they well they're going through this long left hander now in towards the bus stop chicane time is running out here though Connery Time is running a lap. He won't be able to finish this lap. That is too little time remaining. So it's just going to be the bus stop chicane, and that will be it for Team Sykes. So we'll get ourselves swapped on over uh, to that race session. 
Qualifying is completely and utterly done. Here is the starting grid here for the pro race. Took a while to get here, but finally we get things started. Team Tomjik pole position, Mitchell De Jong behind the wheel of that one. Team Sims with Maximilian Beneke on that front row of the grid. Team Krohn, Lauren Henrik in P3. Team Vissa in P4 with Nesta Garcia Lopez. Team Gunther, Martin Kronke in P5 with Team Glock, Alexandra Voss in P6. Team Eng with Graham Carroll, P7. Team Farfus, P8 with Maximilian Wernig. And then we look to the back of the starting grid. Team Sykes, Rudy Van Bruen in P9. And of course, uh, we round out the 10 car field right at the back there as uh, we'll get ourselves the track information once again. The track temp sitting at around about 30 degrees Celsius, which is cooler than our, our original session was. So uh, that's going to help the uh, grip level somewhat as uh, winds are relatively moderate, 11 kilometers an hour. Partly cloudy here at Daytona as they stack themselves up uh, behind the uh, safety car here, ready to get ourselves started. Yep, so we'll uh, be seeing how that run is down into turn one. Of course, your pole sitter is going to be one of the one dictating when they get going. But we'll get ready for this one then. But it's Team Tom Check then. Pole position heading in towards those final two corners and it'll have to be patient. Wait for that pace car at the front of the field to pull off into pit road and then we'll be getting set for this race. It's certainly going to be a good one and uh, we're certainly uh, looking forward to bringing you this action here all the way to the end now. Here we go then. All ready to go. Team Tomzik and Team Sims on that front row of the grid. So Tomzik actually just going to back up the field just a little bit. Mitchell De Jong behind the wheel of that one. Just waiting for that safety car to come down onto the pit lane. And then field will be under the control of the leading car. It's going to happen in just a couple of moments time. But here at the uh, BMW Velt. It's racing here at Daytona. Team Tomjik able to get away well from pole position. They're going to be side by side though for P number two coming in towards turn one for the first time here as they hit the anchors trying to get slowed down. Still side by side for P2 there as all. Oh, it's almost been crowded off the circuit as uh, Team Sims has still been able to solidify themselves into P2 but it looks like there's been a little bit of an interesting situation there. Might have been a slow down penalty in effect here for the start of the race. Yeah, of course, in our race, if you do cut across the course, you do get a time penalty. You do have to slow down and concede the time that you gained by cutting across the course. But right now, Team Tomcheck at the front of your field through the right hand hairpin. And it was a 27 then at the back. Then we'll look on board and Team Sims, Max Beneke, he won't be happy about this and he'll have the bit between his teeth to try and move his way forward in this 15-minute race. Of course, uh, yeah, team, team Sims and Max Bedecki not having the best of starts at all. A little bit of a battle coming down in towards turn one. They get cycled towards the back, but seems like everyone's still in that one big drafting train right now, so still space for Bedecki to work with uh, when he comes back through, but we can see Tom Tomjik might just come under threat here down into the bus stop. No, not quite, as that number 24 car still hot on his heels, and oh, that's a lot of exit gear being taken by that second car in line who is Team Krohn so at the front of the field it's Team Tomjik and from Team Krohn Mitchell De Jong versus Lauren Henry for P1 and P2 at the moment absolutely fantastic epic stuff here comes the draft effect into play now really starting to reel in that race leader pulling out to the right that's the place that Team Tomjik will want to make them go because you make them go around the long way and that makes it a lot more difficult into turn one that's exactly what's happened there Look Whoa. behind, it's all getting a bit close. Team Vissa and Team Farfus, they're getting involved in a battle here for third and fourth place. And uh, the rest of the teams are all queuing up. Down the inside goes Team Farfus. A oh. little bit of door banging there. And who's that taking advantage? Well, he's got Team Gunter now coming through up into fifth place. Yeah, so Martin Kroggen might just be able to pick up this position. But there's been a bit of contact coming through the kink by the two cars ahead. That Team Farfus almost getting turned around there as the he's able to somehow hold on to that car. Very good driving. How on earth did Max Venick hold on to that? That was incredible to see that through that left kink, but this action is still going on here. And the thing is, if these lot battle away too much, they'll lose the leaders in this event. 
Yeah, as we see riding on the back of Team uh, Gunther right now, as uh, we'll see uh, Team Visa, Nesta Garcia Lopez trying to lock on to the back of him. You can see how big that BMW M8 GTE car gets. In terms of the cameras here, you can see, look at this, Nesta Garcia is trying to sense for a move, maybe down into the bus stop, but not enough, uh, well, not going to make the move just yet. Of course, it is still the early stages of this race. There's no point in really going for those risks at this stage. But of course, only a short race, 15 minutes, and I did notice Ooh, a little Carol. bit of yeah, a little bit of damage to the front of that team Gunther car. So uh, they'll be hampered a little bit in terms of top speed and maybe a little bit on front end feel. But uh, Graham Carroll from Scotland making the move. It's team Tom Check and Team oh. Crone. Look at that side by side. Team Crone on the inside line trying to wrestle the race lead away from Team Chongjik. They they basically hit the bricks at the exact same time, but Chongjik's just pushed wide there. Mitchell De Jong not able to hold on. To the position. Nesta Garcia Lopez has been able to make his way through to the race lead, but we've seen a spin right at the back. That's Team Farfest. This time, Maximilian Venig does spin the car right around. It's in turn one instead of the kink this time around, though. Yeah, we saw drama at the front and drama further down. We'll have a look at this replay then. And it's going into turn one then. And uh, Max Venig on the brakes, getting a little bit close and just, Ooh. oh, getting to the back of the car in front. That spins him, half spins him, collects the, uh, the German of, team, uh, of uh, Max Venig in the Team Farfus car, but we're back now to live pictures. What can De Jong do in second place here for Team Tomczyk? Yeah, it's basically a two-horse race at the front of this right now because both of them have been able to break the draft right back uh, to the rest of the pack. So it's basically them all alone here at the front of the field. So Team Tomczyk, though, Mitchell De Jong, the American, trying to close back in. As long as he's able to keep in the draft here, he still has a chance uh, over Nesta Garcia Lopez. You can see down into the bus stop, uh, he's able to close up just that little bit more. Uh, so he's uh, able to really, really reel in. Oh, we have a car off. That's a car off, and uh, we're going to see who is that. That's Team Glock there, as uh, Alexandra Voss has had a big, big moment there coming into the bus stop. I'm not going to say the line, but it was uh, it was Team Glock that ended up getting uh, sp uh, spinning around there. We'll have to see here whether it was a little bit of contact or whether it was just on the brakes, the car breaking away, and it's going to be contact. They're on the inside, and just not enough room to make it around. And hitting the tyres there that hard will cause a little bit of damage to the rear of the car. In fact, they've had to take oh. it down onto pit road. Yeah, that's going to be it uh, for Alexandra Voss. A little bit of battle out there on circuit right now the 28 involved in this one that's team Gunther Martin Kronke uh, currently uh, trying to attack Rudy Van Bruem in the team Sykes car here he's gonna look for a move coming through the king surely he can't make it work through there it doesn't look like he has the overlap but he's gonna get attacked from behind as well the 27 dragging it in door to door coming through the right hand uh, and well it looks like that 27 is just gonna be able to squeak their way through no it's still gonna be four on the outside coming through this uh, left hander so Kronke immediately going from attack to basically defense and he loses the position yeah so uh, and that shows how quickly things can happen in the infield here at Daytona and how if you make a move at the wrong time in the wrong place you end up losing ground rather than gain it but look at this people trying to use the draft people trying to, try to break the draft your two leaders going through the bus stop chicane as these guys come into the bus stop chicane through the left and the right then the right and the left and it's the run out the corner with the draft and we could go three wide here if we're not careful oh these might be sensing for it certainly a possibility as you see the car right at the back of the train go very very high up the circuit and uh, well let's see if they're able to get the run off the corner that would be the important thing but back to your uh, battle for P1, I believe, or P2, P3. Uh, that's going to be P1 out there on circuit right now. So Team Tom, Jake Mitchell, De Jong trying to work his way back in. And, well, he's keeping himself in contention at this stage. But look at that, two by two, like Noah's Ark in towards turn number one. As we see, oh, oh. here's about a concept. That's a big, big moment with the pit wall there. That is absolutely huge. Team Sykes, Team Farfus are involved in oh, that one. Oh, rejoin, that guys. rejoin is going to be interesting. But we'll see a replay up on screen for you now. We're on board with actually Nesta Garcia Lopez, uh, Team Avisa, as he tries to dive himself down and towards turn number one. What happens here? We're just going to have to let it run through. 
Yeah, so you'll look at this then. So oh. it's a contact to the right and then to the left. It bounces him across the track there. And uh, it's really difficult when you've got a three wide situation there to give the space and to uh, to give it each other. But around the go. But look oh. at that substantial damage there to that car. And uh, the, that's going to be race over for them. So basically now we're looking at survival of the fittest here uh, in this event. So uh, the race leaders are really the only two that are fighting it out. And it's all really an argument of uh, who really wants to uh, finish in third place. Yeah, of course, uh, Team Tom, Tom, uh, Tomzik, Mitchell De Jong trying to close in on his competitor you can see closing in closing in and uh well through the nascar turns the nascar banking they go it might be another opportunity for mitchell to make his way by here certainly one on the cards heading their way in towards turn number one but does he want to go for it for with uh six and a half minutes remaining that is the big question uh dion keeping himself back for now goes a little bit deep into the corner but is able to recover it doesn't lose too much time actually yep yeah, uh, so uh, really close battle between these two third and fourth are uh, pretty close together but we'll stick with this race leading battle six minutes remaining and uh, well these drivers they're running out of time here in uh, this event but uh, right now through the left hand uh, they go not really going to make an overtaking move into here really you're trying to force a uh, error out of your driver in front of you here through the uh, through the international uh, horseshoe and down through that infield but then it's all about that run out of this corner you can see the car Mitchell De Jong fighting it in that team Tom Chick car just having to uh, fall into line here for the time being but keeping it crucially here Connery in the draft right now so uh, yeah definitely keeping this one up and uh, keeping his eyes on the prize right now eyes on the prize that's for certain it's these two right at the front of the field that are just uh, all alone absolutely no one to try and third party onto this one so it's just these two with five minutes remaining we see the riding on the back of the leading car right now uh, as uh, we see lauren henry uh, as part of team crone currently leading the pack around or leading this pair around for all intents and purposes it's been a bit of a frantic uh, mess inside of that middle uh, pack but here we go Mitchell De Jong looks like trying to go around the outside, inside, maybe possibly a move, but he's just going to sit back for now. And I think for, uh, for that car behind, it's just sizing up the move right now, just seeing where he can get him and where he can't. You don't want to be in the lead at the start of the last lap. Around this track, the draft is that strong. We've seen how Mitchell was able to pull up and to get up to a point where he's alongside. Maybe just vying and seeing what he could possibly do here against that Team Crown car as they head through the left-hander now onto the brakes once again. And, uh, oh, running wide there. Now, is that running wide oh. deliberately to uh, maybe lose the lead? But Mitchell's <laughs> right up behind that rear diffuser now, putting the pressure on your race leader. Here we go. Look at that. Basically on the rear bumper of your race leading car right now is uh, that Team Crunk up big wide arc into the uh, NASCAR bends they go. You can see the time between them stands around about two and a half tenths of a second. That's only going to close in further and further the longer that Team Tomzik uh, stay in that draft. And there we go. It's going to still stay behind right now. I, I think uh, Henry's just going to pick and choose the place that he wants to get past here. Or he could just be setting up for just a draft pass on that last lap. Last lap. We've just had the note from Race Control. They've had a look at that incident that happened where you have the cars bouncing around between themselves. No further action is being taken in that incident. It's been deemed a racing incident. But here we go then. The battle between the two leaders heading towards the line again. And with 2 minutes 58, 57, it's a matter of two laps remaining in this race. Yeah, that's basically going to be it. Uh, Mitchell, Team Tomzik here, they've kept themselves in the best uh, position here, maybe to size for a move in the dying moment of the race. But where and when do they want to try to make the move? That is the big question. Uh, Team Tomzik have been relatively passive up until this point, but it's going to be a case of when that actually starts to change. Yeah, it certainly is as they're uh, coming through and De Jong keeping the pressure on here. 
in towards that right hand hairpin but again that's not really an ideal overtaking opportunity so staying in line staying in queue as i mentioned though you don't want to be leading at the start of that last lap because you can get caught out by the draft and uh, right now team crone lauren henrik uh, is there is he trying to uh, make the most of it and uh, think right i'm in the lead now i'm gonna keep this well, we'll get our answer in just a couple of moments' time, perhaps, as Team Tomczyk once again, big old draft into the bus stop chicane, but still doing nothing with it just yet. Coming up to around about 1 minute and 30 seconds left to go in this pro race here, and it's still very much undecided in terms of who comes away with the race win. It could be any one of these two cars. And if, heaven forbid, they come together, it might be third place of Team Sims coming back to the front of things. But here we go. Maybe, just maybe, Tom Schick now going to be sizing up for the move. It's still not quite going to happen for them. Are they going to look around the outside? No, not quite. Oh, this is getting a too tense for my liking. De Jong's holding back there. He, he has to be holding back yeah. there to be that close in the draft going down in towards the trioval there. That is definitely holding back off the throttle. I expect to see the move coming on the exit of the bus stop chicane. The exit of the bus stop chicane is the most crucial thing for both drivers right now. Yeah, that is it. So that is the main thing that has to be in their minds at this point. Lauren Henry, Team Krohn, can they hold on to the race lead here? Coming through the final half of the lap of the final lap here as we get that information from race control. Team Krohn now out of the, inf out of the infield section and now out onto the banking. Team Krohn still in the race winning position right now, but... Uh, Henrik, uh, but De Jong as part of that Tomzik team been so so passive and now maybe it's his time to strike He actually lifts out of the throttle doesn't quite want to get past just yet He's just waiting for the exit of the bus stop time has expired and there we go team crone to Lauren Henrik He's deliberately fallen behind so maybe he can get the slipstream pass coming through the NASCAR bends and coming on to the start finish rate Is this the master plan? Is this the 200 IQ move for Lauren Henrik? that's going to win him this race is he a little bit too far back though has he overdone it we'll just have to wait and see Mitchell de Jong and team Tomzik currently in the race lead but you can see the M8 just get bigger and bigger and bigger here comes Henrik here comes team Crone side by side across the finish line they go but I believe I believe team Tomzik might have just come away with it but we will have to wait for the official timing at the end of things to call our race winner but oh my word, photo finish, Team Tomzik takes it, Mitchell de Jong is your winner. Wow, wow, wow. That was a heck of a play right there. I didn't expect to see him back off into the bus stop chicane and then go for it at the end. It almost worked Seven out thousands. seven thousandths of a second between the two of them. Incredible. Let's not forget as well, Team Sims, Max Benecke in third place as well. Prize pleasing, yeah, prize paying position. But here's the end again. We'll have a look at it from above. But that was incredible. A really good move to make there from Lauren Heinrich oh, oh and oh. look at how close that is across the line then unbelievable oh photo word. finish that is sensational and well we had to wait a long time for that this was but it. that was so worth it right there that was worth it oh that finish was so so close but it's team Tomzik Mitchell de Jong coming away with it at the end of things they seem to be incredibly incredibly elated as well of course we had to mention the fantastic recovery drive from Maximilian Beneke uh, after early problems, but man, that was so tense. We had to wait for it, but that was so worth it. It was absolutely brilliant. Let's also mention as well Team Gunter in fourth with Team Farfus in fifth, Team Eng in sixth with Team Sykes in seventh, Team Wittmann in eighth place with then Team Visser having to stop and also Team Glock having to stop as well. But absolutely sensational racing there at the end absolutely loved that one and it was completely worth it for that one yep it was absolutely brilliant indeed we've had a photo finish here at a live event at land that, that's uh, been a long time coming but that was absolutely um brilliant indeed 
Uh, absolutely hats off to Mitchell de Jong for holding on in that situation. But Lauren Henrock, I can see the plan. It... It was seven thousands of away from working. That was a risk. That was a that was huge a risk. risk. But I tell you what, if it, if it had just maybe got a slightly better run out of the final chicane, he could have maybe just got it. But that uh, that was incredible. And uh, you know, hats off. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have have, have that. That's a big call. That is a huge call to make. Especially, and especially with this much money on the line. Yeah, just absolutely. Just make a call like that. That requires something special. It didn't work in this case, but there could have been so many other factors that might have influenced that. Maybe if he didn't drop back as far, maybe if he didn't lift out as much, yeah. it might have made up that uh, seven thousandths of a second. If is the biggest word if. in motorsport. It really is. Not just in sim racing, but right across motorsport. If is the biggest word. And we could sit here and say about all the ifs, but well, there is one winner right there. And he is 10,000 euros better off. It's Mitchell de Jong. Oh, he'll, he'll be happy with that, uh, that bit of uh, work there. 15 minute race to, uh, to win 10 grand. That's not bad. That's, uh, that, that's not bad. It's, uh, it's basically, uh, what, a 15 minute race? It's about uh, 40,000 <laughs> euros an hour. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, so uh, that's, that, that's, uh, that's a neat bit of work there uh, from Mitchell de Jong. Of course, one of the drivers that has had to travel the furthest to be here today. He lives in California, in the United States, and he's won uh, here in the pro race in Munich, in Germany. Germany. Just it's worth brilliant. it. It makes it worth it, absolutely. And uh, he'll be uh, he'll be made up with it uh, with that. And uh, yeah, I can see the grin.